there are two levels of training uh, that we need to do, right? Yeah. First is user level training. And what we've just talked about is strictly, well, not strictly, but you know, everybody this user needs yep. to go through that training, right? And that's everyone too, including your C-suite and all the Absolutely, ship. especially the C-suite. Don't let them talk you out of it and say, no, I'm too busy. You know, I'm making financial decisions. No, they need that training as well because they're your top targets, right? They're your whales. That's who I'm going that, for. Uh, absolutely. So it's critical we train that's all right. the all the people in the C-level suite, right? So. I'm Eric. I'm Mike. And welcome, welcome to, to the Cyber, Cyber Sit Rap. Woo! We yes. did it. Again. We're killing it. Yes. All right. You just put too much pressure on us now. Now I'm I know. Fold. Now we'll fail. But that's okay. That's what we're here for. <laughs> so, Mike, what's our what's our topic? What so, we we're going to discuss. We were going our Cyber Security 101 series, and we are going to discuss the core. Right. The so beginning levels of what you can do. Right. So, this would be the second. We just talked about the introduction, uh, trying to set the tone, and now we're going to start with core. Let's get in the center of that bullseye. Right, and uh, just as a recap from the intro, this is that uh, area that's really easy to implement, both from a skill and a cost perspective. And in fact, you, you guys are going to be underwhelmed, I, I, I promise. But it's really important because we got two things. Right? I know they're they're For on course. their seats edge, going like, "Oh no, what it, is this going to mean? Can't be How that much simple. is this going to cost me?" Exactly. Well, let's get right into it. What's, right. the, what's the first thing we need to do? Well. At Where is your data? Right. What is your data? Right. I like to call it my cyber inventory. Yes. Um, critical data, right? Critical data. Um, but by identifying the data, you can identify what is critical. Because I ask a lot of companies, hey, <laughs> right. what's your most important data? And I either hear all of it or I don't have important exactly. data. Exactly. <laughs> and once again, I'm getting this sense of deja vu, Mike, because we just talked about we this did. in another it, it set up, right? On, dude, where's your critical data? That's right. So uh, we'll put the link up in the uh, in the window there. But check that out for a little more in-depth. We're not going to go as in-depth on that. But uh, to Mike's point, we're going to identify that critical data in our environment. And then we're going to back it up, right? Once you know what it is, we need to make sure it's available uh, absolutely. all the time when right. we need it. Right. And exactly. so, once again, the other set rep, we talk about the 3 2 1 method, yep. three backups, two different sources, one at least off site, right? Out of your, your normal operating area. So that way, if your house gets, you know, destroyed by a tornado or hurricane yeah. or fire, then, uh, you know, you've got your and data. It's, and it's a simple thing for a small business. So, think about this you yeah. do a backup on your system or locally, you do a backup to the cloud somewhere, right. and then you get that USB drive that and you can plug three. in and do a backup, but then you can unplug and bring home yes. away from the office. Easy so day, right? That's your you know, enumerated backup that is safe from mm -hmm. not only hacking, but fire damage and other. Right. Right. So in addition to that backup, which once again, watch the other SIP rep, do it, right? Have those those copies, a local and remote. We talked about that, right? Yep. Uh, the other thing too is, and, and I'm still coming around on this, Mike, is uh, you got to remember when we were coming up in the world, we had a lot of tape data and encrypting <laughs> tape data was kind of a dicey proposition back in the good old days, it right? Was, yeah. It was. It was, you were just lucky to get the data back, period. And then- You just hoped your tapes didn't melt. Exactly. <laughs> or they didn't stretch. And anyway, we're, we're dating eaten ourselves. in the machine. It was a real thing, and I have PTSD from it, okay? I do. Just get that out there. It's I've a real thing. I've hung a lot of tapes in my day. Right. I, I've thrown a lot of tapes away and <laughs> cried when we didn't get them back, right? It's it's yeah. no fun. But if you can, and your your risk tolerance is there, employee data at risk encryption, right? And once right. again, we talk about that in another sit rep. You can use either software-based or hardware-based uh, encryption for that. You could use both if you wanted to. I don't think you really need to do Windows that. Windows and Mac both provide encryption they do as natively, part of their right? system. So yeah. BitLocker, FileVault. Yep. If you're rocking Linux, it's Luke's, L-U-K-S, yep. right? That's on the software side. And then on the hardware side, companies like Apricorn, love you guys, yep. out in uh, San Diego, Poway, uh, they make great hardware encrypted products. We use all across DOD and, and uh, federal government. Have three of them in the house right now. I, I, I think I do too. I think I have in my <laughs> backpack, I think I have three or four myself. So They're we basically love... USB devices yes. that are self-encrypted with a passkey code, something, right. thumbprint, we whatever you use. Make it super easy, right? And they're yep. anti-tamper, et cetera. Uh, so you do that in your backpack, right? That's what you would transfer back and forth. Exactly. Uh, and then the, the final point uh, is uh, the, the amount, the frequency you need to back up should be based on the volatility of that critical data, right? Exactly. Are you changing your files every hour, every day, right. well, every week? Yeah. 
you yeah. know? Yeah, and if you're one of those that you are changing it quite a lot, then you may have to do a little bit more robust backup solution to account for that. But, you know, uh, see what it is first, yep. see what the volatility is, and then plan around that because this is the one thing that is non-negotiable. This, uh, nothing else, you don't get anything else from us, back up your darn data, right? It, it will save you, it is the only true savings from yeah. a ransomware attack yeah. because you have that one of those data backups will be good agreed you know natural disasters insert threat same here. same yep. yeah i mean it's it's you know if you rack and stack them honestly everybody this is the most important thing to do period right because okay. if data's gone think about your company if you lost all your client database you lost all the work you were doing right would that hurt you yeah the answer is always always yes and so could have it, it kill in the backup you? Probably, yep. right, absolutely. Okay, enough on that, so back your data up. That's back the up. first part. Super easy, right? That's a no-brainer. Uh, the next one is just as easy, right, Mike? Uh, I think so, and it's something that uh, we, we like to joke that the number one threat to any network system are its users <laughs> exactly i was gonna say the user yeah yes. absolutely so how um, we specifically we... if it's my mom hi mom i love you <laughs> um but she'll click on anything oh you're gonna get it so you're gonna get she it. knows i tell her okay. uh, weekly when i All fix right. her stuff i will try to film it everybody when it happens so you can see it <laughs> and we'll play that as like a b-reel or something that's That'll right be awesome. mike being taken down by mom so, so so mike what you're alluding to is we need to educate our users we right? need to train we need to train our users train right? them train them again train to, them some more right to recognize cybersecurity threats in the environment That's right, right? Um, you know I, I like to do a couple times a month wow. with training um, small trainings you know, sure sure five and ten minutes which once just... again catch our other sit rep we talk yeah. about you know cybersecurity training is it working we argue it is but to your point Mike uh, you know uh, small frequent training sometimes trumps the big long ordeal right the death by powerpoint once a year tends not to work because right. uh you know people have seen it before you don't really update it you're not telling like, them anything is, new right? this is the time that i have yeah. to sit through this you know yeah. the head slump and they're like did i get through it can you sign me off yeah please god let it end right right but little ones that they get in their email and they go online and yeah. take a little you know quizlet or something then sure that's something new and you can always change it up yeah, get something right new out there right on uh and you know for you cheapskates out there right that are pinching the pennies. Yep. There are free and open source or free versions out there. We mention in our other sit rep the uh, uh, Defense Information Systems Agency Dis Cybersecurity yep. Awareness Challenge training. It's made available free every year as a completion certificate. I love the training. I think it's great. Yep. It has a lot of uh, uh, a lot of acronyms. <laughs> the good news is is their glossary is excellent <laughs> at breaking that out, and they have a lot of a supplemental material that uh, if you want to do more than just check that box, which if you're watching our cast, hopefully Hopefully you do, because right. we, we will smack you otherwise. Uh, read those supplemental materials. They're excellent materials out there. Absolutely. And then for low-cost options, there are numerous companies out there yeah. that for you know a couple dollars a month per user, yes. they will provide this training. Sorry, I, I'm just chuckling because it reminds me of your commercial you made. For My dollar a day. Dollar a day. If it, just Google Digital Beach, a dollar a day, <laughs> and you're going to, oh, it's just... I got my Perfection. dog in it. it got my great. dog in it. It, it was, was important. Great. Has yeah. the intern sucking a thumb? It was. Oh, was that, <laughs> that you? That was me that under the desk. That was you. That's right. CEO whisperer. That's, That's right. right. Yeah. So, uh, so once again, very affordable option there. Yeah. Uh, and once again, if you have a managed service provider, they'll more than likely have that available as well. Uh, other third-party options. A shout out once again, unsolicited. No before. We love you guys. Our training is is top car, uh, top shelf. Uh, they have uh, affordable options as well. Yep. Uh, they have a, a, a la cart kind of menu where you can do specific just core training you can do fishing you can do all these other things uh, they've got you covered so check that out right yep and, and as you say they're they're not super expensive and you know it, it is something that then your users can get that monthly right short but yes. informative training right and it makes your life easier right because you know anytime you you put a lot of uh, stress on your your security personnel they only have so many hours in the day right so something's going to give so please leverage technology where you can uh you know it's not very much money invest that in your people make your life easier the nice thing too is those companies uh, all have progress reports right that they'll give you you can track who's been trained exactly. when they train when, when they, they do follow-ups if you right. haven't perfect um, and they also offer phishing tests yes test your users to make sure right. they, they know that uh, you, the training is working right right um, I like phishing tests some people are like oh well, do we have to put our employees up to it but I think if they know 
then they're aware. They don't yes. want to get caught in their own company fishing. Right. That makes them more aware for it, other it fishing. It does. It's fair game. Because right. everything is, could be from the company, and I don't want to fail. <laughs> I agree. I agree. So get training. Now, that being said, there are two levels of training uh, that we need to do, right? Yeah. First is user-level training, and what we've just talked about is strictly, well, not strictly, but you know everybody this user needs yeah. to go through that training, right? And that's everyone, too, including your C-suite and ownership. Absolutely. Especially the C-suite. Don't let them talk you out of it and say, no, I'm too busy. You know, I'm making financial decisions. No, they need that training as well because they're your top targets, right? They're your whales. That's who I'm going for. Absolutely. So it's critical we train That's all right. the all the people in the C-level suite, right? So we got our normal users, uh, Mike, and then we also have our privileged users, right? Think yes. of our system security staff, uh, our uh, system administrator staff, et cetera, right? Just because I'm doing your IT doesn't mean I don't need cyber training. Absolutely, right. And, I and in fact, like, one of our other uh, bailiwicks, CMMC 800 it's a requirement that we give our specialized people the training they need uh, to do their jobs effectively. A little effectively. more senior level training right. on Ex protections. Exactly, yep. right. And so, once again, there's great resources out there. You could do the free route and look at you know podcasts, things like that. It's a great start. Uh, but I recommend some kind of paid subscription mm -hmm. or, uh, to Mike, to your point, if you're going to do a certification, uh, there's all these great resources out there for that. I don't want to spend a ton of time on that, but right. just realize you need to do both, right? And so the security people have to do both, unfortunately, right? Yep. The users just have to do user training. And then one component that we've, we've talked about, but I just want to reinforce is that no matter which angle you choose, make sure you include social engineering in there, right? That's right. Uh, and, and use that as a discriminator for the training that you use, because to your point, Mike, the, the people are the weak, the weak part of the loop, right? And so we're constantly being targeted with phishing emails, using Using social engineering tactics, techniques, procedures, TTPs, right? So demystify that for your people. It's not rock and science, but it is science. It is a discipline, right? And see our other uh, podcast or podcast or sit rep we have on that yeah. uh, that talks about um, uh, that in, in specificity. Sorry, I can't talk. So I'm trying to remember <laughs> Chris's last name. And Chris, I apologize. I always I always mess it up. But socialengineer.org, right, is where you want to go yep. uh, to get that as a start. But all those other reputable companies that offer training. Will We'll always have social engineering baked into that, right? So the MGM hack took yep. them about 10 minutes and it was a social engineering phone call. Yes. They look you up on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. they find out you're a new employee, they call the company and say, Hey, I, I'm the new employee, I lost my password. Well, I know. And then they're in the company. I know. It, it, it gives me goosebumps, but it is that easy sometimes, right? It, because as human beings, we're hardwired whether you want to admit it or not. We like to help other people are better angels against us exactly and yep. so that's just that's targeted so mike that's it that's the core right two things that's it i think Back we can handle up. that everyone out there yeah, in, and uh, treat your people. Um, yeah if not please let us know in the comments and we'll tell you you're wrong uh you know but of course <laughs> easy right this shouldn't take very long to do especially know your data back it up and then train your people especially yeah especially as a smaller organization this will take you a couple days right, and can to get be through. done for free and all done for well hardware right your if data you backup. if you don't have a backup then yes but i can tell you um you know shout out to costco every few months they have five terabyte drives for under a hundred dollars oh, that's insane right so awesome. i pick up a few and then that's my backups Right on. Uh, would you like to do our shout out? Sure. Today, we're coming to you from the Studio 809 Community Podcast Studio at the Next Us, which is a professional cooperative environment for small businesses in downtown Colorado Springs. So they help us out. We're appreciative of them. And remember to like and follow us so that you can get more cyber sit reps. Uh, stay tuned. We're getting ready to go to ring one. That's so. right. We're moving up. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Bye now.